Hello everybody, welcome to a continuation of the previous video of six large format jelly prints. And on your screen you will see the last of the series of six. And I uh, wasn't satisfied with this uh, print because I find it very dark. I did an experiment with uh, red and phthalo blue and it turned out to be darker than I want. So I think I'm going to remedy it with some collage and possibly some metallic paint. So I have uh, found some of my scraps here my uh, copy paper printouts and I also have some bright orange copy paper that I have offloaded with my brayer in the past and uh, they actually are very useful so I think I will lay them out like so. Have this here. And have this like so. And so I will begin by mounting these. And uh, I'm using my Mod Podge matte finish. And uh, I have added some water to it. I would say about, about 10% just to make it easier to spread because uh, straight out of the jar I find it much too thick. I'm having these vertical pieces like so. Yeah, I, I had to think about this very well because um, it's a pretty elaborate print and I would hate to uh, not use it and have it languish in a drawer because I'm not happy with it because uh, that's how I am. If I'm not happy with an artwork, I don't feel comfortable showing it. This is a little tricky because it's a it's a negative shape. And the good thing about Mod Podge is even if you lay it on thick, uh, it seems to disappear when it dries. 
That's why I find it very forgiving. Okay. I'm just squeezing out the bubbles. Here's this circular form here. And lastly, this, this is what I call a negative shape. Again, it's kind of tricky to mount this because it keeps curling up but once the uh, water content of the glue penetrates the paper it will behave squeezing out the bubbles because I like the uh, collage to lay as flat as possible. Sometimes it's a bit of a problem with tissue paper because it's so um, fragile. But with copy paper, it's a little sturdier, so I can uh, press it down. Okay, that's it for the layer of collage. So I'm going to air dry this with my desk fan and see what the next step is going to be. So I'll be back in a few minutes. Okay everybody, I'm back. And I was able to go through my box of reusable stencils. Now they're, they're kind of hard to see uh, as they are right now because the background is so busy. But I uh, laid these out to expose certain areas and to hide the darker parts. And I have here, uh, piece of plastic which I'm going to use as my cheat sheet and I'm going to trace trace the shapes so I can remember where they go it's just a rough guide because when I'm done, uh, I have to flip this backwards or reverse it. Okay. So that is how I want the layout of the stencils to be. 
need to take this, put this aside. Let me check these guys. Let me put this aside. So now goes backwards like so. And the good thing about the plate being sticky is that once I lay the stencils on, they won't budge. They stay put. Okay, I think I put the wrong one. This goes up here. down here and this goes here and this goes like so there Okay, so now I'm going to use Blick. This is a bright gold and I will have the bright gold on the top. And the bottom because that's where the darkest parts are which I want to correct and then I will have a stripe of copper in the middle but it will pretty much be bright gold. Now, the bright gold is semi-transparent. So I will start with the copper. gradually blending up to the gold color. So 
Now I'm going to take the stencils out. And they go right into my soaking pan. Now I'm hoping that this layer of metallic gold and copper is going to brighten the uh, print, which I find very dark. Okay. So to refresh your memory, here is the print with the collage elements. Now the collage elements brighten up the, the piece, but I still think it needs another layer. So here goes. And for those who uh, are curious about what kind of paper I'm using, uh, this is Stonehenge by Legion. This is an American-made paper, and it's not that expensive. I think it comes out to about $6 a sheet, and this is 22 by 30. Uh, this is available at dickblick.com. I'll put, put the link in the description box below. Okay. I'm putting a great deal of even pressure with my hand here. Okay, so I'll leave this for about five to 10 minutes and I will be right back. Okay, it's been about 10 minutes. Let's see what we got. This is the exciting part, and I hope this works. I think it does work. So the metallic layer gives a little dimension, a little shine, but not too much. And it does cut down on the darkness of the thalo blue. Um, here's a close-up. I think it gives a little interest to what is underneath. That's when you create this illusion of what is 
behind and what is in front with layers, it makes the image more interesting. So I'm glad I was able to salvage this because I had my doubts. I was very disappointed with the result. But you know, you have to be realistic when you do experiments. It's unrealistic to, to expect everything to turn out great. Because I know sometimes there will always be work that's not too great and you have to expect that and find a way to correct it so i'm glad this worked out uh, so this is print number six this is probably the most complex one of the set uh, it combines several layers and collage plus a layer of metallics. So uh, again, I want to thank you for coming along for the ride. Uh, thank you for subscribing and watching. And if you can, please donate to my PayPal account to help keep this channel going. And I do hope to see you next time.